Eagles are ready for the flight. The duck would never be ready for the flight. If I keep them around, I will soon forget that there is a flight and I will not be there trying to take care of the duck, trying to learn how the duck quacks. That's what the duck is going to, oh, you need to come to my level. The level is me to come and start quacking. No, I'm built for flight. So I want people who are ready to go the mile. Stop. If you quickly want to, the moment anybody in my community starts to give me duck like duck like feeling, I can't read, I can't do this, I can't. Mm -mm, that's time to separate the duck from eagles. I'm not built for quacking, I'm built for flight. So the people I'm raising, we're building for flight, we're building to go, we're not building to chill. Does that make sense? I would rather, I would rather you have an average training program with people with potential than have a great training program with a bunch of dogs. That's how it works. You cannot train some people to get to where they need to go to. It's a lie. It doesn't work like that. People with giftedness and ability can only increase two numbers. People with giftedness and ability can only increase two numbers. I learned this thing from Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul would always tell you, Give me the talent, I will teach them commitment. If somebody is not committed, you can't teach the person to sing. But if you have an amazing singer, then we can teach them commitment. We can teach them every other thing. But you need the person to sing. So you cannot have somebody who is committed, a good singer. It doesn't work. Take the talent in singing. The person is already a good singer. Pastor Paul built his churches back in the day. You had a Sammy Oposo coming from the clubs to come and sing in church. But look at the impact Sammy Oposo is doing in the world today. Because use the talent. Use somebody who is talented and gifted. Teach them every other thing. Right? People are not going to agree with it. People with giftedness and ability, they can really only increase two numbers. They cannot go from one to ten. It's not possible. You can't go from one to ten. Some people say the Holy Spirit. You can't go from one to ten. <laughs> it's not possible. You cannot take a person that is a two and make them a ten. You are not good. You are not good. I can't. I don't like spreadsheets. No matter how Remy sits down with me and teach me all the secrets in spreadsheets, I am never going. It's not a course. I'm never going to be as good as a Remy on spreadsheets. I'm never going to be as good as my wife on spreadsheets. It is not a course. So work with the person who is talented in that area. That is how it works. Simple. So why stress yourself trying to figure it out yourself? I am never going to be, my wife is amazing. I'm never going to be as good as she is. I'm never going to be as good as Remy. Put me in a boot camp for one year. I am not going to still catch it. So in developing leaders, you've got to recognize talent. It does not take long to discover greatness. It doesn't take long at all. It shows up. It does not hide for a long time. Think about singing. Everybody on this call now. Hannah, Hannah is our music director. Is going to do our vocal warm up. So, so just imagine all of us in this call. You tell all of us that. Um, let's tell everybody. Hannah tells all of us to sing. Sing for a minute. Our favorite songs. Let me tell you. In a few seconds, the Unomas will shine without even trying. The Unomas will shade Remy nicely, sharply, <laughs> immediately. That, that is how it works. <laughs> we will know those that can't sing. <laughs> can you drink out of the <laughs> I said, that's what you're still going to ask, right? You, immediately, without, without trying, the people who are good will show up sharply. That is how it is. So <laughs> we, you, 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 in seconds, greatness, you know who is good at something. You know who is good at something. But many times we don't like to admit it. If you're going to create a leadership growth culture, I'm going to spend a lot more time on this next month. If you're going to create a leadership growth culture, you've got to be able to recognize potential and use potentials ah, quickly. Use them. Look, look, there was a lady, members of my team will see what's happening now. I'm going to, well, it's not a confession. I think they knew. There was a lady that walked into my team and she went straight to the top. Let me see if they can remember. She went straight to the top. Bolanli Aremi, do you know who that person is? You may not have noticed. Remember Bolanli's friend who joined the team? Oh, Tina. Tina, right? She went straight to the, the talent. We noticed, we noticed. The, what Tina, the value Tina was going to bring to my team was as in within 24 hours of meeting Tina. Within 24 hours of meeting Tina, 
I knew she was the head of everything I was going to do. When Tina told me she was going to leave, she left for personal reasons or whatever. I called Tina. I asked my wife. I literally was begging Tina. I, Mr. Aaron, I told Tina, I need you. I need you, Tina. Can we find a way to make this work? You recognize talent. Talent. Tina was going to, Tina, if, I, if Tina shows up tomorrow, I'll still take her. Tina has all kind of good she was going to add to what I was building. Just like that. Just like that. So guys, this thing is not rocket science. When you are good, you are good. <laughs> I miss Tina. I really wish Tina was on my team. My my whole business and stuff would be in a whole different place right now. I can almost bet it if Tina was here. And guess what? There's the law of magnetism said that we attract who we are, not who we want to be. No, no, no. We attract who we are. We attract who we want. If I have people like Tina, if I have people like Bonnelly, if I have people like Rebby, if I have these great people around me, guess what? We would always attract potential people. I was telling them on Monday. I said, look, because she, 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 she's not doing some of the singing in church at the moment. I said, no, 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 no. I said, that's not what you want to do. Unless there are good people like you. I said, you want to be able to attract people like you, which means your voice needs to be what is heard. Right? You attract who you are. So she needs to, for her to create more of those type of people who are going to be like her, her voice needs to be heard. In when, when Transformation House goes to church eventually, I'm going to spend money. I'm going to spend money in putting a diff, a type of people on, on, on the system because I want eventually the type of people we're going to attract will be the quality of what they see. But if you put quack, if you put whack on stage, you're always going to attract whack because every mediocre person now thinks we can be, we can now sing. No, <laughs> raise the levels. That's how it is. You raise the levels. When you raise the levels, certain people, most people, people like that, that's why House and Rock would always have great musicians. House and Rock would always have great singers because the levels are high. They pay a price for that level, right? The better leader you are, the better person you can attract. It's not possible for somebody who's a four. I would answer all the questions later. It's not possible for somebody who's a four um, in a one to 10 leadership to say all of a sudden, uh, or someone who's a seven to say, Hey, I want to, I want to, I just want to dump myself down today and go and go and listen to somebody who's a one. It's not possible. So as leaders, we're there to recognize potential, attract potential, develop potential. You recognize the potential. You want to be able to attract the potential. You want to develop the potential. Do something with what they get. That's where the training is. When you see people with potential, empower that potential. That's how they develop a leader. That's how we develop a leadership growth culture. But I intend to do that um, a lot next, next month. People will grow into the conversations you have around them. People will grow into the conversations you have around them. I talk about Eloha all the time with my social media. Everybody wants to work with Eloha. Why? Because of how the conversations I have around her. Right? As far as I'm concerned, everybody knows that in my books, Bolali is a great event, event person. So everybody wants, wants a Bolali on their team. How do you talk about your team? To the level you grow, the conversations you have around your team is how people would, would that's, that's how the people, would, those people would also grow to that level. I remember one of the big fights Bolali I had, I had, we were having a workshop. I said, I said, <laughs> I can't remember what I said that day, but I must have said something that irritated the heck out of her. I, I said it blatantly. I said, oh, you seem to be quite good um, pre-event, something like that, pre-event. But on the event day, I don't see you. <laughs> she did it. She did not. She was not having it. But look at how she stretched since then. That's how we stretch. Don't, in leadership, don't, don't hide these things. It's not. People would, if you, if you just keep telling the people around you, it's all right, it's all right. They would go, they will keep dropping. They will keep dropping. They will keep becoming empowered dummies. You don't empower dummies. No. All right. On the to-do list of leadership, of developing people, number three, the third thing is focus on is developing three areas in a person's life. Every one of my team, there are three areas I'm constantly watching to want to develop in their life. Number one, you've got to focus on developing these three areas as a leader Number one, you have to help your people make good choices. That's your job as a leader. The people under you, help them make good choices. Help them make good choices. I did I did something during the week. Balale was going to do it. I told her that I did it does not mean you have to do it. Right, Balale? 
It may be a choice for me, but may not be a good choice for her. Mm. Right. I'm talking about helping people make right choices. You help your team get on side of your team to help them make the right choices. There is a choice you must make in everything you do. The choices you make would make you. The choices you make would make you. And let me tell you something. You need to develop and mentor people in their choices because most people do not make good choices. So that's why I have to develop myself as a leader. Then I get down to also help my, my team members make good choices. And they, they, most people don't make good decisions. And why develop choices? For a couple of reasons. Number one, choices are the easiest to change and the fastest to improve. If you want quick growth, if you want almost like immediate positive return on the walk, walk with people on choices. That's why I'm pushing on my people. I want to say, where are you trying to get to? What do you want to do? Walk with your team members on choices. Help them develop good choices. Walk with them on their decision making. Because in matters of choices, you can grow faster than you can in matters of skill. Skill is not everything. Skill is not everything. If you, if you have people around you who can make good choices, I'm not worried about what would happen to my retreat event because Bolale has been trained to make good choices. She knows, they know the kind of thing I like. So I get angry when they start saying some things that they know that I wouldn't have said. So I'm like, where is this coming from? Why are you coming to me? Why? If somebody, there's one we had, if somebody told you that I said, maybe I drank something, that I said that kids are allowed. Hey, hang on a minute. You know me by now. It's, how much is that child going to pay for the event? That's not how I think. So somebody may have misunderstood it, but I expect the people on my team to fix it. <laughs> do, do you understand? Because you know how I miss it. And, and that, so, so when you, when you help your team members make good choices, it also helps them. And so a person has a bad attitude in your company or in your team, you sit down there and say, Hey, you know, you have a bad, no, you don't have those kind of conversations. You f let that person go. I'm always amazed about people in their company complaining about people who have bad attitudes. Look, it's going to spread. It's going to spread. It's going to spread. They'll come in and say, uh, my employees are lazy. If you're not going to work as hard as Bolanle, you can't work it in my team. If you're not going to put, pull your weight, there was a time to ask Remy. Rem, Remy found it difficult. She was doing, but she, wait, she literally had to define her position in my team. <laughs> right? You, you had to define your position. Because and if Bolanle is here, I used to always ask Bolanle, I said, why do we need Remy? This is all coming out. Why do we need Remy? What is Remy doing? Bolanle, right? <laughs> I could see the value. In fact, Remy had worked with me longer than Bolali. Remy's worked with me in the past. But in terms of my setup at the moment, there was no need for a Remy, right? Bolali, that, those are the questions we used to have those days. Yeah, and, so and I refused. I yeah? refused. <laughs> I said I refused to, cut, to, 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 to follow you with that. <laughs> yeah, but eventually, literally, Remy had to define her role. Remy's coming out now, right? You, 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 you can't see oh. No, no, no. I knew. I knew. I knew. Remy had to literally define her position, define her role. And the moment she got it, we, we had somebody on the team who was adding something extra. Right? You have to ask, what are you bringing? <laughs> Most of the, what, what are you bringing to the team to be on the team? I have people say, coach, I'm going to work with you. I'm gonna, and in my head, I'm like, so what are you going to bring to the team? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do better than Remy? What are you going to do better than Bolali? What are you going to do better than Jimmy? Okay, I'm good in this thing. Then what else are you going to add to me? Hmm. Nothing. <laughs> because most of the things that you think you can add to me, a Remy and Balali can do it. A Jumi can do three, four rules. So, <laughs> so what's the problem? <laughs> that is literally how I, the, the team is here. They will tell you. I'm like, okay, so what else is this person going to add to me now that, that somebody else on my team already cannot? But the moment Tina showed up, Tina showed me everything that my team didn't have, didn't have. Literally within 24 hours, Tina was at the top of operations for the company. That is how you build your team. But Tina left, but now Tina will come. <laughs> or what Remy or Balali will rise to the Tina. So, so, so you have to develop choices. I'm using my team to tell the story today so that it makes sense. Um, help your people work on choices. Help your people to develop to develop their choices. So another area you want to develop, develop people who have talents. 
people who have talent. Jumi, very talented guy. When Jumi showed up, he wants to be dancing and all that. Well done. But all I threw at him was once, hey, why don't same Linda? Who who would do what they're doing better than Linda? But the, the funny thing though, everybody, the day somebody else can do it better, you lose your job. That's how it is. Unless there's something else you're adding. Right? The moment J Jumi showed up, I, I spoke to Caroline. Can you see Jumi? J um, J J I was working with somebody before, right? Guys, remember, we're working with, what's his name? God's, God's um, Gideon. Gideon, right? Gideon was my go-to guy when it comes to tech stuff. Gilead. Gilead, Gilead was my go-to guy when it comes to tech stuff. The moment Jumi came, Jumi wasn't doing any of that tech stuff. The moment Jumi came, I said, hey, Caroline, could you show Jumi a few things? The guy picked it up. Literally, team members, right? Literally within 24 hours, Gilead's role was done. <laughs> done. Not that Jumi was as good as Gilead yet. But I would rather work with somebody with talent. Even Gilead himself, I showed him Kajabi. Right? I would rather work with somebody with talent and somebody who is willing to develop the talent. In fact, the more talented they are, the more you want to develop them. So... All that Jumi is is not about website. No, there's so much in Jumi. There's so many areas to Jumi. And as long as he will keep his head down, I'm going to stretch all those areas, push all those areas out. So many talents. So I will keep him close so that I can help him bring out and pull out all that talent. Same thing with every one of them. I'm already telling Remy, I said, look, there are stages in this Remy on the money thing. Don't come and now think that we have arrived. Remy, is that not the conversation? Don't think we have arrived. No, 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 no. There are stages, there are levels we have to get to with this thing. So I'm constantly pushing my team members. The moment any one of them no longer wants to push, we're not going. We're not going. You have to be willing to stretch. You have to be better than what you were doing last year. Right? The, the, the tendency is we take people with lesser talents and say they need more training. No, 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 no. Listen. Listen, you want to give your best training to your best people. The people who listen, they're, I'm just going to say, Remy and Bolanle speak to me literally every day. <laughs> Sometimes maybe 10, 20 times in a day. You spend your time with your best people. That is, Jesus had 12, but he spent the most of his time with Peter and John. Who was the third? There was the third. No, it's Peter and John. Yeah, Peter and John. Why was he not taking the 12th? Why was he not taking the 12th all the time to the mountain? Why was he not? No. As a leader, you don't spend your time with, you don't give equal amounts to everybody. No. Peter, John, and James. Yeah, different levels. But there was John, there was Peter, there was still a John, and there was a James. As a leader, you don't give the same equal amount of time to everybody. No. You, the people who are willing to stretch, the people who are willing to go up, they are the people you spend your time with. I will spend most of my time with Remy and, 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 and Bolanle. They then help me cascade things down. I make most of my decisions around my team, around the two of them, because they, they have stretched to get there. Yeah, this was the same Remy that one year ago or two years ago was not even sure of her place in the team. <laughs> Do you understand? But she's just come up and gone straight like that. She found her own. Remy displaced some people in my team. I'm not going to mention names here. Remy displaced some people in my team, literally. Displaced some people in my team when they showed up. <laughs> you give your best training to your best people. You give most of your time. Unoma, where are you? Are you, are you hearing this now? You give your best. That's why I told uh, Unoma, you there. Look, let them go. You give your best time to the best people. That's it. The people that want to stretch, stop, stop working with people who are not ready to stretch. You develop your best people because your highest return is going to be there. Your highest return is going to be in your best people. What Bolali does for me, what Remy does for me, that's where I get my highest return. And listen, guys, when money comes, we don't get paid equally. It's let me just say it, don't get paid. You can't give, you can't, you, we don't get paid equally. Simple. That's how it is. <laughs> in your company, they don't pay the managing director the same thing they pay the manager. It's not. They solve different problems. And the higher you are up there, the more you get. You may be the one doing all the technical stuff and da 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 But how much problems are you solving for the person you're working for? 
or working with. That's, that's how it works. 